Hi, this is Roger Sanchez, and I'm going to tell you guys how to put together a track and to set up a live set. When I'm creating music, and I think especially for people that are just kind of starting out, it's always good to listen to a lot of music that you like, just to kind of give you a headspace. Uh, now I take inspiration from being in different places, sometimes watching a film, sometimes just a conversation, but anything can spark an idea. I think that you just need to be completely open. I think one of the most important things to start to make a song with is a basic idea. It could be a percussion, a melody. Usually I start with percussion, but sometimes I'll have a melodic idea and then I'll create an entire track based around that one idea. The hardest thing about making a track or a piece of music sometimes is deciding when to stop, but I think when I sit back, I try to keep things as simple as possible, and I stop making it when I feel like this works. And there's no one specific time or one specific way to finish a track. When it feels right is when it is right. I definitely test out a lot of my material before I actually not only finish mixing it and releasing it, but sometimes while I'm still developing the idea just to kind of see the direction that that track should be taking. So sometimes I'll finish it, play it, and then rework it completely, or sometimes I'll just complete the track based on the reaction I've had from a crowd. I think one of the things to keep yourself relevant and to allow yourself to constantly keep moving forward is to listen to a lot of new and different types of music all the time. I don't listen to one style of music. I listen to everything from hip hop, soul, funk, everything. Anything that's interesting to me, I'll check out. And I think that allows me to take my mind to a place where it might not have gone initially. And it's also important, especially in dance music, to listen to what's happening at the moment and see if any of those vibes inspire you. Well, I think the first easiest mistake to try to avoid is to play all the biggest hits, one right after the other, especially if you have a short set. And depending on whether you're a warm-up DJ or whether you're a headliner, if you're the warm-up DJ, what you don't want to do is really set it up in the wrong way for the following DJ. Uh, I think it's important to know if you're taking a peak slot, then you can have records that really will drive the crowd crazy, uh, but to know how to pace yourself. So try not to just, you know, kill everything in one shot. If you have an hour to work with, I think the first thing you need to do is, is make sure you have the songs that mean the most to you. Um, make sure you have music that you can connect with the crowd. It doesn't necessarily have to be the most commercial record or the biggest hit of the moment, but there should be a sound that really speaks to the crowd about who you are and what you're trying to say. I think when you go to different countries or different places, it's always good to kind of get a sense of what the vibe is in that place. There's some cities and some countries that are more vocal oriented, some are a little more instrumental oriented. That may influence me personally in terms of how I'll put my set together. Um, but I generally do have my own sound and my own vibe, so I do think it's important to pay attention to where you're going to. I think in order to create a, a moment, or a climax moment on the dance floor. Part of it is preparation in the sense of having the tools to be able to create it. You can have effects, you can have records that have huge breakdowns or buildups, but it's very important to really be in the moment and to vibe with the crowd in front of you because that'll give you the indication of which way to do it. Uh, and every single crowd is different. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,